Good afternoon and welcome to Chimeric Therapeutics presentation. Chimeric is developing groundbreaking CAR T cell therapies for solid tumors based on scientific research conducted by leading US CAR T experts at the City of Hope Cancer Center in Los Angeles. The technology known as CLTX CAR T uses chlorotoxin, a peptide discovered in scorpion venom, as a tumor targeting component of the CAR to reprogram T, T cells. This technology is currently undergoing phase one clinical trials at City of Hope. Today, we have uh, Dr. Christine Brown, the scientific founder and executive chairman, Paul Hopper. Paul is the founder of Chimeric. He has more than 25 years of experience in the biotech and healthcare and life, life science sectors. Focused on startup and rapid growth companies, he's served as founder, chairman, non-exec director or CEO for more than 14 companies in the US, Australia and Asia, including Virolytics, Imogene, Prescient Therapeutics, Polynoma and Suda Medical. His experience covers extensive fundraising in US, Australia, Asia and Europe, and he has experience in corporate governance, risk and strategy. Dr. Brown is a faculty, me faculty member in the departments of hematology and hem hematopathy poietic, nice, uh, nice pronunciation, cell transplantation and immunocology, and one of leading CAR T scientists in the US today. As deputy director of the T Cell Therapeutics Research Laboratory, Brown, the Heritage Provider Network Professor in Immunotherapy, provides scientific oversight for the clinic preclinical research program, as well as the ongoing clinical trial program focused on the development of CAR engineered T cells for the treatment of uh, solid tumors. I'll now hand it over to the guys and just uh, as always, any questions that do come through, please feel free uh, to submit via the Q&A box down the bottom. Uh, I'll now hand it over to Paul and Christine. Thanks very much. Look, thank you, Simon. And thank you everyone for logging in to hear the presentation this afternoon. And I just give a welcome to uh, Professor Christine Brown, who's dialing in from um, California. And I think it's about 6.30 in the evening. So. Christine is going to help me out on the, the deeper science matters that may arise. So if we could just start off here on the executive summary. Chimeric Therapeutics is an Australian company that was incorporated to license technology from City of Hope, which was discovered and developed at uh, Christine's lab at City of Hope. So we have the global exclusive rights to the CAR-T therapy. Um, which is the subject of this presentation today. Our first drug that we're targeting with the CAR-T is a CAR-T for glioblastoma or what you would call uh, adult brain cancer. And uh, the therapy is known as chlorotoxin CAR-T therapy and you'll see the acronym CLTX, which is chlorotoxin. The unusual part about what we're doing here is that the CAR-T actually has its basis or part of its construct coming from the death stalker scorpion, its toxin, its poison, and that's the 36 amino acid peptide. So it's a rather unusual sort of background to a CAR T, but it is quite unique. And Christine will talk about that in a little while. We're targeting glioblastoma. It's one of the deadliest cancers and uh, the, the, the outlook for patients with that disease is not great. Uh, we've demonstrated, or should I say, the lab has demonstrated that the chlorotoxin, that is the scorpion component of this, can be successfully built into a CAR-T cell. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on. At the moment, CAR-T therapy has demonstrated some incredible success in blood cancers. And I think it's fair to say that it's one of the hottest places in uh, immunotherapy or, or oncology research in the world today. And Big Pharma is watching it very, very carefully and certainly uh, plowing significant resources into it. Can we go to the next, Simon, please. So this is a novel platform technology which has uh, applications across many cancers, not just GBM, and they would be maybe prostate, melanoma, lung, etc. cetera. Um, we are already in clinical trials. So a phase one clinical trial at City of Hope is underway. So that comes, that's the culmination of five to 10 years work under Christine and her collaborators at City of Hope, uh, all the preclinical work, extensive tox and safety work. 
and we got the IND uh, approved by the FDA at the end of last year. And uh, two patients are now on the study and we're recruiting further patients. So we expect to have some data out in the first quarter of next year. The trial's being run at City of Hope, which is one of the leading cancer centers in the US, named the 11th Beth Cancer Center Hospital um, recently. So the strategy after the phase one, if we get positive signals out of the phase one study, would be, would be to go to the FDA and seek a, uh, approval to do a phase two pivotal study. That is a study that could be, uh, uh, if it demonstrates what we believe the drug can do, that could be allowable for a, uh, an approval effectively. And uh, we'll talk about that in a, in a little while. We have uh, an extraordinary senior management team. Um, unfortunately, I'm not able to reveal who they are just at the moment because they're finishing up but they come out of uh, two of the most successful CAR-T companies globally. I, uh, we have a great board. Uh, Leslie Chong, who's also on the board of Imogene, is a uh, glioblastoma expert. She came out of Genentech where she ran a number of their brain cancer trials. And Leslie Russell, who is a cell therapy specialist as well. As you probably know, in biotech, you don't actually have any real hard assets. The asset here, as in most biotechs, is the intellectual property, and we have very robust IP. There are no CAR Ts uh, anywhere that use chlorotoxin, that is the scorpion poison, as part of the construct. So we're pretty comfortable with that. Manufacturing is done. We have GMP manufacturing at City of Hope, which is an acknowledged and highly regarded CAR T manufacturing facility. And the drug we believe will be safe. And um, it's had extensive prior experience in, in humans as, a, uh, as an imaging agent. So we believe that the safety side of it is going to be okay. Unlike a lot of the uh, blood cancer CAR Ts where you often get, or you can get cytokine storm, which is a nasty negative response of the immune system. Um, we've done a lot of work to get us into man and maybe I could just ask Christine to just talk briefly about the comprehensive work in vitro and in vivo that was done to get us to the point where the FDA allowed us to go into a phase one. Great, thank you, Paul. So um, this work started uh, over five years ago and really centered around evaluating patient human brain tumors um, for uh, the chlorotoxin binding and developing mouse models of brain tumors to evaluate the therapy. And what's important is that um, this therapy showed potent activity against brain tumors and also um, exhibited um, no toxicity that was observed in these preclinical models. So we spent a lot of time optimizing the therapy, developing it further, and establishing a clinically relevant manufacturing platform to bring this to clinic. And this is what we'll talk to you um, about today. Thanks, Christine. And, and, and just finally, we have a, a rather major differentiator to the blood cancer CAR Ts. This drug is given as an outpatient um, and uh, does not require the hospitalization that the other CAR Ts require, which adds a huge cost to the, uh, the therapy. And obviously that's a, a major concern to the reimbursement authorities and the insurers. Um, Simon, let's go to page five, which is technology highlights. And Christine, could I ask you to just run through a couple of these, the highlights on, on these, if you would, please. Great, so I just wanna reiterate some of the key highlights to this therapy. So really what we're talking about, that this is a novel immunotherapy um, that reprograms the immune system through developing this CAR T cell therapy to recognize solid tumors. And so one of the key aspects is that we believe that this um, therapeutic could be broadly applicable to many different solid tumors. And there's strong evidence based on our preclinical data and based on this agent also being a chlorotoxin peptide already being dosed into patients in other clinical trials. So there's strong evidence to support the safety of this therapeutic. And then in our lead um, indication, glioblastoma, um, we show that 
this uh, therapeutic broadly recognizes brain tumor cells and many different patient tumors, uh, many different glioblastomas, and they're highly effective at eliminating um, uh, brain tumor models um, in mice. And then finally, the, the differentiator that um, the Clint, uh, City of Hope is has a, a really robust translational infrastructure, as does my laboratory. So we've been able to take this from bench to clinic in um, just about five years. And so the clinical trial is underway and um, we're, we've started um, treating patients. Thanks, Christine. Um, if we could go to slide six, please, Simon. Um, I'm going to just explain briefly in, in layman's terms, which may seem a bit presumptuous given that Christine is on the phone, but what is a CAR T cell? So basically what they do is they draw blood from the patient, then by a process called leukophoresis, they spin out the T cells. And you, you may know that the T cell is one of the important arms of the immune system, but the T cell doesn't always pick up cancer cells. So what they do is they essentially reprogram the software in the CAR T cell. And if you look on the diagram here, you'll see the gray circle that says CLTX CAR T cell. So that's after the T cell has been reprogrammed and becomes effectively a guided missile specifically against a target on the surface of the cancer cell. And in this case, it's a, it's a molecule called MMP2. And, a, and an associated complex. And this CAR T cell that we have here called CLTX CAR T is very specifically directed to molecules on brain cancer cells and also would be applicable in other cancers. So that's effectively what it is. It's a reprogramming of a T cell and turning it into a very specific targeting cell against a precise target on the cancer cell surface. I hope that was okay scientifically, Christine. I'm impressed, great job. <laughs> Thank you. Um, can we go, Simon, to seven, please? Um, you've had an introduction uh, to Christine from Simon at the start and uh, her collaborator and fellow uh, inventor is Dr. Dr. Michael Barish. So we're extremely fortunate to have both these people with us. Uh, the company has a three plus two year contract research agreement with them, which basically gives Chimeric access to the lab and the people and the facilities and equipment within City of Hope. Next one, Simon, slide eight. Um, Christine, could I ask you to take this, why it's unique? Sure, I, I, I think it's, you know, I just wanna to touch base on some of the unique aspects of this therapy. Um, this is the first CAR T cell to use the chlorotoxin peptide. And so it's a very novel receptor that's engineered into T cells to allow it to recognize and then hopefully destroy a broad range of cancers. And so this is an important aspect. Um, if you're gonna have an effective immunotherapy, you wanna make sure that the T cells are reprogrammed to recognize um, a large number of the uh, malignant cells to really debilitate um, the growth of the cancer. And so this therapy has been developed to achieve that. Um, another important point, which I mentioned before, that chlorotoxin as a peptide has been in clinical trials and been shown to be safe. So it's been used as a radiotherapy and delivered into the resection cavity of patients, so delivered locally into the brain, and that's been shown to be safe by others, not us, but as a peptide. And it's also been used as an imaging agent. So putting, using um, the chlorotoxin peptide fused to a fluorescent molecule and given systemically, intravenously, um, so that a surgeon could more um, precisely reset the tumor given its specificity of binding malignant cells. And that as well has been well tolerated in patients. So we're really building on this foundation and now using the immune system to not just um, to take advantage of this unique binding property of um, this peptide. And then finally, what's unique is really um, the experience from my program, my laboratory and City of Hope for translating this therapy. So 
And, you know, we think it's really exciting that we've already initiated a phase one study and really um, moves us forward quickly in, in the therapeutic development of this platform. Thank you. Uh, slide nine, Simon, thank you. Christine, just if you could let us, uh, the audience know what other cancers are available or could be available? So our lead candidate is really focused on glioblastoma and we'll talk about that later and, and the reasons for that. Um, but I, you know, what we think is really enabling and exciting is the broad range of tumors that have been shown to bind the chlorotoxin peptide, which we believe that means that this therapeutic could be very um, advantageous in treating and potent in treating. That includes um, tumors such as melanoma, prostate cancer, small cell lung cancer, and other, um, other brain tumors. Thank you. Could we go to 11, Simon? That's the media attention. Uh, just quickly here, the, the, Christine's work was the subject of uh, a major peer review article in, science, in the very prestigious Science Translational Medicine, it was the cover uh, article. We had an enormous amount of uh, response to it, and we are still receiving calls from people interested in the technology, willing to explore collaborations, etc. If we could go to the next one, Simon. If you have a look, just if you Google CAR Ts, you'll see that it is one of the hottest areas I mentioned. They talk about cures. They talk about the immunotherapy revolution. So it's an area. It's a. It's an area of research which is very, very keenly sought. And I expect we will see some further drugs in the, or the first drugs in solid tubes coming out in the not too distant future. Hopefully this one. Uh, if we could go to 13, some, there's just for those who are interested on the financial side, there's been some big deals. Um, back in 17, Gilead acquired Kite Pharma for 11 billion. In 18, Celgene acquired Juno for nine. Uh, this year, on NASDAQ, um, a company called Legend Biotech did the biggest biotech IPO. Uh, they raised 424 million. They actually had bids into the book for a billion. And then just uh, recently, a week or so ago, and this is quite a good comp to um, Chimeric um, Innate Bio announced that they were going public and they're raising $86 million as part of that. Um, if we could go now to 14, please, Simon, glioblastoma. Um, Christine, you might just take us through that and mention some of the, the way it's treated today and the lack of new therapies. Right, so glioblastoma is a primary brain tumor, meaning it arises in the brain. It's one of the most aggressive and common adult brain tumors. And I think what's critical and one reason um, this is our lead indication is that you know, that there has been no real therapeutic breakthroughs in decades. So uh, median overall survival remains at, you know, under 10%, closer to 5%. And that really hasn't changed in many decades. It's an orphan drug indication and um, therapies are getting approved such as bevacizumab or what might um, others might know as Avastin on really um, limited improvements in overall survival. So Avastin was approved with not improving overall survival. Um, and so there's a, a, there's a relatively low bar for getting thing, uh, therapies approved because there's really no other therapeutic options. And so we think we have a huge opportunity to make a significant impact in this patient population. Thank you. Let's go to, let's go to 15. So let me, um, just to give a, a few points about our ongoing phase one study, um, this started this year and it's led by um, Dr. Ben Mbadi, my clinical partner at City of Hope, who's um, chair of neurosurgery. And so this is a, a phase one uh, safety feasibility study. Uh, our goals are really to establish um, the maximum tolerated dose. We've treated two patients thus far and um, things are going well, patients are doing fine. Um, we anticipate treating um, approximately 18 patients to establish uh, the dose that we would move forward with in a phase two pivotal trial. And, um, and we can 
I think that's a, a good summary for at this point. Thanks, Christine. Um, 16, please, Simon. Um, I won't repeat uh, the, the phase one, but we, if we see very positive signals out of the phase one, we would go to the FDA and talk about a pivotal study, just as Avastin was approved on a phase two study for GBM. And that would be a 50 to 75 patient study across four to six centers and uh, do the manufacturing outside. If we could go now, Simon, to um, the slide uh, 18, because I think we've talked about the manufacturing. Uh, IP, as I mentioned, is very robust. No one else is using a chlorotoxin, a scorpion-derived peptide as a, in, a, in a CAR T, so we're very comfortable with that. Um, next slide, Simon. I've mentioned the board of directors, uh, both people with uh, relevant experience to the, um, to the business. And then on slide 20, um, the advisory board, uh, we have quite a few people here from City of Hope because it is a center of excellence in uh, CAR-T research, manufacturing and development. And all of these people are very enthusiastic about uh, the, the, the prospects for this particular drug. Let's go to the next one. Um, the options open to the company going ahead. There's multiple ones. Would, well, first would be the sale of the company. Second would be to develop it independently. And the third would be a strategic partnership with Big Pharma. I, I think uh, if the phase one performs as we expect it will, then we're gonna have lot, lots, of, lots of option in the early stages of this drug's life. Next one, this is just a little bit of a, a further to the earlier slides, illustrating how some of these preclinical, this is prior to phase one companies have sealed major deals, you know, back in 14, Pfizer doing 80 million up front and then Vaxalta in 1605 up front, Gilead and so on. So big interest in anything that has a lot of promise. So we're very excited. And Simon, can you take me to the last slide? We've got a very busy year ahead next year. As I mentioned earlier on, the, the technology and the announcement that it's gone into Chimeric has generated a lot of interest. So we are looking at collaborations with other companies in complementary technologies. Uh, we have the sponsored research agreement with Christine's lab uh, over the next three to five years. And we're gonna build out the platform for other cancers such as melanoma, prostate and breast. We think we'll probably do patient updates March, June, September, um, and December. And if the trial tracks according to what we hope it will do, we'll start getting ready for the phase two trial towards the end of next year, like finding the CRO to run the phase two and then find a manufacturing facility to make the phase two drug as well. So we'll have a busy year next year and um, lots of exciting things. So. Thank you everybody for your attention and uh, we'd be happy to answer any questions if there are any. All right, thanks Paul and thanks Christine. Uh, just a reminder for those that are on the webinar, if you did wanna ask a question, just do so via the Q&A box down the bottom. Uh, first question is, when do we expect phase one to complete and how many patients are recruited for phase one? Right, so we've got um, 18, approximately 18 slated for the phase one trial. Um, recruitment rates obviously uh, determine how fast you get the trial completed, but we, we've said 15 to 24 months, uh, depending if later on in the trial, we decide to bring another center on in the States. But Christine, is that in accordance? It's accurate with our expectations. Great. Uh, next question is, what has been the company's funding history to date? Uh, and are, are there any intentions um, to do further pre-IPO rounds or otherwise? Right. So uh, we have done a, um, a convertible note issue for about 4.3 million a couple of months ago, uh, which has funded us nicely. Um, we're considering what the opportunities are in terms of capital raising going forward, but at this stage, we haven't yet made a decision. Great, thanks, Paul. Uh, what would the potential structure of a phase two trial look like? 
Right. There was a little summary there, but again, Christine, I'll I'll have a go at it and I hope I've got it right. Uh, we think probably 15 to 75 patients um, across four to six centres in the US. Anything you want to add to that, Christine? I, I think that's what we're expecting. And, um, you know, we've also discussed potential sites in Australia as well. So we're looking at all those as options. Great, thanks. Uh, that concludes the Q&A. There's been, uh, for a private company, there's been uh, some serious interest uh, in terms of attendant, attendance, which is great to see in terms of the prospective nature of, uh, of the technology. Paul and Christine, I might hand back to you uh, to provide closing remarks uh, and anything else that you want to finish on. Yes, well, look, I've um, been involved with a lot of different biotech companies. And when I met Christine and saw the work that she and Mike Barish had done, I was um, extremely excited and was very intent on being able to license it. So for me, it's a great privilege to work with scientists like that. Like that. And I think um, if you dive deep into the science and read the, the, the papers that are out there, I think you'll share my enthusiasm for the great promise that I think this technology has. So um, it, we're in for an exciting time. Thank you. Thank you very much.